All right, good morning. It's about 7.30 my time. I had a question from a viewer uh, regarding using CSV files to import data into your project. Now, there are a few ways you can go about doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I'm going to show you a mostly manual way. And the reason is because I've had issues with the plugins that you can download for um, Godot. And so I just don't want to use those plugins. I haven't found one that worked seamlessly. You're welcome to try that by going and, and you know, shopping around at, with the plugins. But I'm going to show you a way that should be pretty foolproof. All right, so <clears throat> what you want to do is in any of these spreadsheet editors, you know, pick whichever one you like, you're going to set up a project file like this. Um, I'm doing one for enemies, so I've titled it enemies. And <clears throat> you want your the names of the uh, you know the keys for all the values to be at the top. And I just added a, a little bit of formatting to separate them. And whatever um, is on the left is going to be the key for that um, that whole entity. So. <clears throat> like you want your name to be on the left side is what I'm saying. So if you have items, you would have like potion, uh, antidote, Phoenix down, all of these things going down there. And then you have all of the, the attributes for that thing um, to the right. So yeah, we have all of our headings, yada, yada, yada. We want to go to file and save as, and just make sure it's on CSV. I've already saved it once, but I'm redoing it for this. I have it in a folder for an imaginary game. <coughs> and that should be fine. So now we have that data saved. What I want to do is minimize that. I'm going to go to that folder. And it's going to be in here. And let's see, imaginary game. And let's open that up in a text editor. And take a look at what, what's going on there. So you can see <clears throat> how it's formatting that data, right? It's just printing it out with all the cells separated by commas <clears throat> between the rows, and then um, each row is separated by an, uh, you know, a line break. Great. Uh, what I found is a CSV to, to uh, JSON, and that's at this link right here csvjson.com slash csv2json and that's two as in the number. What I'm going to do is upload that file, make sure we're doing the CSV. You'll see it show us you know exactly what we saw in here, right? Easy enough. Um, you have two options. I remember by default it was on array and so when I convert it you can see how that looks. <coughs> And that's fine if you want your, your data to be indexed, right? Because arrays are always indexed. Uh, so this would be like index zero, that would be index one, and so on. But what I want for this here is to do hash for the output. And so if we hit convert again, <clears throat> take note of what happened there. It's now using the name column, those values, uh, to create these keys. Right for each of the, the individual dictionaries. And so now this is in a dictionary format. <coughs> and so let's let's copy that. We don't even need to download it because like I said, the plugins to import that data don't work too well uh, from my experience. So let's just make a test script. Uh, I'm gonna call this it's called enemy. Let's call it enemies for now. <coughs> All right, we're going to open that up, and I'm going to paste that data in, but what we need to do is, like, do var data dictionary, like that. <clears throat> and so there you have it. That, your data is right there. We can now do things like, um, you know, print data.slime.name. We could print like data dot um, purple bat. Well, that has a space, so actually you have to do this, <clears throat> and that'll print all of the data. Now, 
This will only get called if it's in the tree. And so I think what I'm going to do... Um, let's just make it an auto-load. I'm just doing this strictly to um, for demonstration purposes. You, you wouldn't want to do it like this. But. Uh, so now that that's auto-loaded, it's always going to be entered into the tree. And so we'll see that information print out down here. <coughs> if we did everything right. All right, so name is not right, and that's that's my fault because it doesn't have a name, right? We applied it to that key. Um, so we'll just print, let's print like their um, strength. <clears throat> so I'm going to close out the game. And you can see strength, right? One. And down here we have data.purplebat. It prints out that whole dictionary. Um, so you can see the power of that for sure. Uh, I wonder if I have my util set keys to names. I do have that. Let's see if we can get that to work. So if I do like... Um, uh, let's say data and then... <clears throat> no, nah, it doesn't work. So you'd have to declare name in CSV. I'm just trying to help you automate this. So if we change this to key, and maybe I insert a column here, wrong side. Then you put the name here. <clears throat> you don't even have to put anything on that. But we have to resave it. And I will show you that function I'm using. Now we go back to the World Wide Web. Grab that again. Um, convert it again. You can see we have name that's empty now. <clears throat> so I'm going to copy and paste that. We go back to Godot. We can close out the running game. And we're just going to fill in um, this. There. <clears throat> so now set keys name should work. Uh, let's show you that function. You're welcome to copy this down. All this is doing is is going through the dictionary that you send it, and it's setting the name uh, key within that individual um, uh, dictionary within the dictionary. Uh, it's setting that name key to the the key. So it's just helpful for things like print data dot slime dot name, right? Um, and then if we run it, we should see slime and then all of purple bat steam. Okay, there's an error. It must have instance references in it. Okay, that's that's on me. Uh, we should just be able to do like let's get rid of this, <coughs> and that should work. Yeah, we don't need this. This is a modified version of it. Uh, you could even simplify it just by like doing that. So just copy that code. And if you want, you can put that code in enemies. You don't need a separate utility script. Anyway, let's see. Slime and then all of purple bats name. Yeah, perfect. So there you have it. That's how you can use um, spreadsheets to import data into your game. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else I need to cover with that. Like I said, feel free to try plugins, but I couldn't get them to work the way I wanted. Um, so for now, I would just manually copy and paste. <clears throat> and I mean, really, like when you want to replace this entire data, you probably just want to like minimize that and then delete the whole thing and then. Um, you know, paste in all that data again. But you'd have to do like bar data dictionary. Or I guess it's easier just to, you know, delete that and then replace it. Whatever you want to do. But you can see how you can populate all of your data now using that. And if you have a lot of different values, right, it, it can make sense to use a, a, um, a spreadsheet format like this. 
Um, but there are other ways, like you can use resource files, you can uh, do it all in code. Uh, these are all things I've done in previous videos. But I just wanted to show you this different way of doing it, uh, especially because someone had been asking about it. So thanks for that question. That was a great idea. And I uh, hope this helps. Let me know if you have any more questions about it. And good luck making your games. I'll see you next time.